where were you? I belong to a Kiwanis Club here in my hometown of Smyrna, Georgia. I've been a member for over 20 years. I really enjoy my time in Kiwanis and visiting with my friends. We meet every Tuesday morning and we always uh, enjoy the friendship and the camaraderie. We get there early so we can drink coffee and catch up on events in our lives, talk about what's going on in the community. We also have volunteer opportunities. We have things we can do that help our community and I love doing that. One of the events and things that we sponsored and have for many years is Meals on Wheels. We deliver meals to shut-ins and invalids and people that just need help, people that may be poor and need to be fed at least one good meal a day and we deliver those. So on this particular day, it was Tuesday, September the 11th, 2001, and it was my turn to deliver Meals on Wheels in Smyrna. The recipients of the meals are always glad to see us, and we try to stay with each family, each person, as long as we can, but still make our rounds in about two hours so that everybody gets a meal. But it seems to brighten the recipients' days, and we enjoy visiting with them. Now, Kiwanis is a volunteer group, and they always insist that two people go on these Meals on Wheels visits. It's for safety, number one, and because one person can drive and the other one can navigate, and we usually have 10, 12, sometimes as many as 15 people that we're trying to get to. And so it's always good to operate in pairs. My partner on this day, again, September the 11th, 2001, my partner was a retired Army Colonel named Walter McElwain. Now you need to know a little bit about Walt. He was a favorite of mine. Walt has since passed away and I miss him very much but he was an old, crusty Army veteran. He was in the Army for more than 30 years. He stormed the beaches of Normandy. He fought in the Korean War in Vietnam. His helicopter was shot down in Vietnam. He didn't like to talk much about his service. Many people from that era just, just don't do it. But Walt was typical of his generation. He was a tough old nut, had a gruff voice and a demeanor to match. On Tuesday, our habit is to meet at a particular place, enjoy some coffee and visit with our friends before we leave to go and collect the meals and get the maps and the list of people that we're gonna visit that day for Meals on Wheels. So we arrive a little bit earlier than normal and Walt and I gathered our stuff up, had our coffee and said our goodbyes. It was about nine o'clock, maybe a few minutes before. So we left, said our goodbyes, got our address list and our meals together and we headed off. We did not turn on the radio. We enjoyed visiting, so everybody at Kiwanis had been talking about the plane that had hit one of the towers in New York City. We all thought it was an accident, but we thought it was an accident, so we didn't even bother listening to the radio as we headed toward our first visit. We pulled into the driveway of this first house. Walt got the meal stuff together, and I grabbed the, the name of the person and special instructions, and we knocked on the front door. Nobody came. We knocked again even louder and I called out the man's name. Nothing happened. Our instructions are to go to another door if this ever occurs. And so we went around to a side door, knocked again even louder, called out, meals on wheels. Nobody came to the door. So I looked at Walt, he said, try the door. So I tried the door handle and it opened right up, right into the kitchen. Now we don't go in with, unless we're invited so I stuck my head in and I shouted real loud, Meals on Wheels, are you home? And we heard this faint voice in the back of the house. He said, come on in boys, I'm in the back. So we entered the house. There in the back room in this little house, dimly lit room, was this small man sitting in an overstuffed chair with a TV right in front of him, about three feet from his face and he was staring at the screen. By now, it was a few minutes after nine o'clock. He turned around, he looked at me, he looked at Colonel Walt McElwain. The man said, pull up a chair, boys. History is being made today. America is under attack. I froze. I was dumbfounded. I looked at that TV. I looked at Walt. He straightened up, straight as an arrow. Walt said, we have meals to deliver and we have to go home and be with our families and we have to go now. This was an order from the Colonel. This was not a request. 
and I knew we had to leave, and so we left quickly. We finished our deliveries as quickly as we could, and every place we went, people wanted to talk about what was going on in New York City, but we just couldn't. So we left and we drove in silence. I arrived back home and I learned that a second plane had hit the tower at 9.03. That's about the time we were leaving Kiwanis to start our route. At 9.37, a plane hit the Pentagon just as we were loading meals into the car. We didn't know that. At 10.03, Flight 96 crashed into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Everyone died. And that's just about the time we were making our first delivery to that house. At 10.28, the first tower fell, followed very shortly by the second tower, and 3,000 Americans died instantly. Like most Americans, my wife and I spent the next several days glued to the television set. A few days later, President George Bush toured the crash site in New York. As the crowd cheered, he said, I can hear you, the rest of the world can hear you. And the people that knocked down these towers will hear from all of us soon. I never heard Colonel Walter McElwain speak of that day again. He treated it like he treated any other combat experience. But I was glad I was with him on that terrible day. He was calm, he was anxious, but he was in charge. He was my friend and I miss him very much. And I'll never forget where I was on that day. Where were you?